Opinions, viewpoints, and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates, and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Scarefest Radio, the radio you can see. And hello and welcome everybody to Scarefest Television, the original broadcast date, August 26, 2022, and that date means, yes, we are under 60 days, under 60 days to Scarefest 2022, Scarefest 14, Scarefest, if I wanted to do the math, X-I-D, I I guess. Anyway, and that's Roman math, by the way. The, um, tonight, uh, my co-host is the uh, lovely and talented Chad Harlan. I didn't set that up, so just go ahead and click everybody over so they can see the whole game. Chad Harlan is my co-host tonight. How you doing, Chad, buddy? I'm great. How are you? And we're redlining you on the board. That can't be bad. I mean, can't be good. There we go. Internet's back in. So, uh. So I paused briefly there while the <laughs> internet went down. But everybody, um, we should be back on the air now. And uh, our guest tonight, um, we ha- it's it's complicated. I'll just say it that way. It's complicated. We have Patty Starr, and everybody remembers Patty Starr, the co-founder of the Spirit <laughs> Fest. We have um, from Midas Code, the production Midas Code, we have Ben Hicks, who... Uh, was the creator, writer, and producer. We have Brian Pitts, the director, uh, technician, and camera person. Did I did I do that right? Yeah. Okay. The, the, the reason I ask is all this information was shared to me over Facebook, and I have learned very quickly that uh, just anything can happen on Facebook. But anyway, so we'll, we're going to be talking oh, yeah. to these people about this production in Kentucky, a Kentucky production. Which just means there's a southern drawl in the accent that it's actually in the Midwest. Um, so it's a Kentucky production, Midas Cove. Everybody, I do have a celebrity announcement um, at the uh, 30 minute mark. We've got some things to talk about there. Now, right off the bat, Patty, by the way, before the show started, me and Patty were sitting here discussing, and I found out I've been at Scurfest doing this goddamn job longer than I realized. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What a perfect description. Or, <laughs> I'll tell you. Never mind. Anyway, apparently, I've actually been doing some form of Scarefest Radio slash Scarefest TV since about 2014. So yeah, so um, that's what I thought. I should get. I should get an extra trophy. I should get something. Yeah. Anyway. Or you can have a T-shirt. Yeah. I like your T-shirt, by the way. Yeah, this I. I normally I change right before the show, but I said, you know what? I just I ain't up to it tonight. Um, and it's an advertisement. Yeah. It's an advertisement. So, That's right. Uh, That's right. Now, uh, Patty, I've had you on the show on both of my shows, Paranormal Filler. I've had you on Scarefest TV. Yeah. I don't know how right. Or radio, anyway. Um, the yeah. big question though is, how do you go make the transition from being the hardest working woman in the paranormal to being involved with Midas Code? Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess I I was just blessed. That's that's just the way I want to put it. Um, working very very hard at Scarefest. Um, uh, I I don't even. Sometimes I look back on the hours that I spent doing this wonderful event and not realizing how in the world did I ever stay alive. And then, like you said, um, I sold the Scarefest to these two wonderful people that in 2016 and since then I, I just sort of was taking it easy 
And uh, I, I moved to Somerset because of a Serena Gordon, being a very dear friend of mine, convinced me that I needed to come and live in Nancy, uh, that I would love the pace, the slower pace, which I did, but it was a little too slow. <laughs> <laughs> so then, you know, Brian speaks up and starts telling me about a project that he was getting involved in. And I'm like, oh, well, wait a minute. That sounds pretty good. So um I um, helped out just a little bit. I don't do a whole lot, but I do what I can. And uh, I've really enjoyed working with everybody. I haven't got to meet all the cast members yet, but I have met a lot of the uh, crew. So, um, and then we're just looking forward to the time and date when we'll start filming. Um, and we haven't yet, but we will be. And uh, just seeing, you know, all of this take place. That's what I'm looking forward to. Just like when I was, you know, setting Scarefest up, I worked on that for two years before we actually had Scarefest, going to conventions and, you know, trying to figure out what to do and when to do it and where to do it and, you know, how it goes. So um, I didn't have to spend that much time. I just kind of got on board and that made it uh, very lucky for me. Well, we're, we're still figuring that part out. Um, now, Let's just get into it. Now, everyone, of course, if you're here, you probably read my lovely description of the show tonight, which I copied and pasted off what you told me. Um, a grieving <laughs> widower, a grieving widower, widower, seeks revenge <laughs> against the individuals who kill his wife and unborn child, and in doing so, he unleashes a reign of vigilante justice that turns an entire town upside down. Um, so, now, everyone, you know as much about the movie as I do. There, that's, that's kind of where we are. Um, I guess we'll start with, uh, with you, Ben, as the writer. Um, mm -hmm. take us kind of through the, I mean, did you write this as a, as a screenplay, thinking, oh, this is my big movie, or did you write it, you know, as a book, you know, or a story, short story? Tell us the... The, the impetus behind Minus Cut. Well, I always, uh, I'm a big fan of the genre suspense thrillers and horror movies. And uh, I just, it just came to me. I just, you know, just started writing this. I've always, you know, I'm, I've always wrote things. And I just put this little town in my head and it just came to me. Best thing. And literally, it's about you know, revenge, but it's also the story of Jake Carter and what, what happens to him in a corrupt town. And he has no other options but to take matters into his own hands because the courts are against him, the whole, the, the political people in the town is against him. And he is literally just slowly losing his mind. Okay, now, being from Kentucky myself, I have to ask mm -hmm. you, as far as the town you created in your mind, how yeah. much of that was inspired, and how much of it was new? <laughs> Honestly, it was completely made up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, you know, it Minus Cove is a it's isolated. It's a hundred miles in every direction. You, you have to drive a hundred miles to to go to the next town. So, it's a town out to itself. It's isolated. I mean. You can pretty much commit murder and get away with it there if you want to. <laughs> so, it's, so it's loosely based on Eastern Kentucky. Um, no, but <laughs> I just heard. I just, well, I mean, I didn't take that into consideration. But <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm just. I, I'll put it this way: we have relatives that live in the mountains, and I just heard some real stories about the political machines behind the camp. And um, yeah. And, uh, oh yeah. And I mean, the little town that I grew up in, Mayberry RSD, town of Kentucky. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you that town, we, the power structure behind that town was so great. We had like the same county judge executive for the entire time I was in school. But I, remember. I mean, you know, they get in mm. there and they just forever ago. And uh, so yeah. that's that's the only reason I asked that. I thought that would be a cute segue. Chad, over to you. I think I've taken enough of the first segment. Well, you gave us a little bit of the inspiration and background. Uh, tell us a little bit about the characters, and do you have any cast selected yet? Yes, we uh, we have uh, Kate Ward. 
she was in a Disney film called Secretariat uh, with Diane Lane, John Malkovich. She was also in A River Runs Red with Luke Hemsworth, John Cusack, Tay Diggs. And uh, she's also uh, assistant to the director on this project as well. She's, she's a veteran in the industry. She's really got us and helped us with a lot of stuff. And we got also uh, Bridget Stratham. She, uh, she actually has a movie on Amazon Prime called Hope Actually. And she's actually uh, shooting a music video. I mean, she's very talented. And uh, we also have uh, a third runner up from uh, Miss Cumberland Fox, Brooke Danielle Way. She's in it as well. She was in the Lazarus game that, that's being shot. And, and some upcoming actors, uh, Lisa Ridenour, she has 20 years of theater experience. She's done commercials very talented person and joshua verix he's in the pure in the dam that's a series he's shooting and uh he's blown me away with his performance he's gonna he's, he's gonna go places and we and, you know that's just the, a little what i've mentioned i don't want to like you know the whole thing but we have multiple talented people on this project how did you go about casting oh god <laughs> that was, that was when it first started out oh my god it was a nightmare at first i mean i just you know i First, I started on Facebook. That was the biggest mistake. <laughs> to <start> there. <laughs> but uh, I, I found these uh, little places online where you can go and post an ad looking for actors and stuff like that. And then I got wind of uh, this uh, called Murder Mystery Marriott. They, they, they perform these uh, little shows and lectures and stuff. And mm -hmm. some of the cast come from there. Oh, wow. Uh, Lisa Ridenour come from there. Uh, Kate Ward, she's from that also. Uh, Boncho, and they are just, you know, they know drama and, and they're really good. And basically it was just like going at it every night, just talking, interviewing, test reading with people to see if they fit, you know, the character. And you believe me, it was a long drawn out process. You know, I play an actor on too. I play Jake Carter. Okay. So, uh, as you're getting all this set, you talked a little bit about the town. Have you done any location scouting, or have any plans of? Is this going to be filmed locally or remotely? Or uh, it's going to it's going to be filmed uh, a lot of the scenes in Somerset. We are coming to Lexington to shoot some scenes, and I'm also going back to Floyd County to shoot some scenes in Prestonsburg. I just left I there just, today. Kinda, yeah. I kind of, you know, I, I want to show parts of Kentucky because there, there's some beautiful places out there. And I, I just think we should, you know, show it off a little bit. Absolutely. Uh, tell us a little bit about the characters then. Well, I play Jake Carter, uh, of course. Uh, he's the one that's terrible things happen to him. Uh, also, uh, Joshua Burks, he plays Eric McDaniel. He uh, plays a the guy that was one of the responsible for my wife's death. And Lisa Ridenour, she plays uh, Tina Summers. Uh, she uh, She's a victim in this. She's actually a person that's been mentally abused. by. Well, she's actually the fiancé to Eric McDaniel. And Kate Ward, she plays Dr. Caroline Taylor. She plays a therapist. You know, of course, Jake's got to have a therapist because I'm sure he's hallucinating and going crazy. <laughs> But uh, we also, uh, we're going to be doing a scene in a courthouse down there. And Terry Salyer, I don't know if you've heard of him. He was actually running for some political office. I forget which, but he's playing the judge in it. And uh, he's uh, another victim. And we also have some scenes with uh, the cartel and uh, biker gangs and stuff. It's, it's a pretty wild setup with characters and stuff. So you said the uh, the the. Lo the town was fictional just out of your imagination yeah. how about the scenario is any of that drawn off real life events or anything that inspired you one thing uh <laughs> jake loses a child and uh i'm in the same boat with jake i lost a child so that's where i kind of draw a little bit of that i'm sure it's pain and, yeah yeah i'm sorry to hear that but i Thank uh you. I, uh, I'm sure that, that going through this process uh, allowed you to express that some, and hopefully... Uh... Well, it, it, it brings me close. 
in yeah. a sense. I know that's it's weird, but I mean, it just in a sense by doing this, it's it's closure on some point. Absolutely, I understand that. Well, right now we're up against the uh, first break. I'm going to go ahead and toss to that, and we'll be right back with uh, with Midas Coat. Everyone is talking about CBD oil, and it seems like almost everyone is using it. The research is ongoing, but the apparent health benefits are overwhelming. If you're going to use CBD products, though, what brand should you buy? First, find out where the hemp was grown. Imports are flooding the market. How potent is it? Look for a brand that plainly states its concentration on the label. And look for full-spectrum CBD. This means the oil contains CBD and all the other cannabinoids, terpenes, and nutrients that are found in the entire cannabis plant. Look for Blue Leaf CBD oil. Blue Leaf Naturals is a Kentucky Proud company. They use only Kentucky-grown hemp, supporting Kentucky farmers and businesses. Visit their website at blueleafcbd.com now and use the code SMILE at checkout for free shipping. And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest TV. We're talking about the uh, series coming, being filmed in Kentucky, uh, coming up, uh, Midas Cove. We've got Ben Hicks and Brian Pitt here. Okay, um, Brian, you've been um, uh, freakishly quiet, so we're going to bring you into the conversation now. How? <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> how, how did you get involved with Ben? What, what, uh, as the director, as a camera person, how did you get involved in the project? Uh, well, actually, me and Ben uh, go as far back as school. We went to school together. Uh, I've known him for a long time, and he'd already uh, been aware that I'd been uh, messing around with uh, film production, commercials, that sort of thing. And he approached me with the project, and uh, like everybody else has sort of been involved with it, we just fell in love with the script after we started reading through it. Uh, the characters, uh, we really think the project's going to go really well. Um, a lot of the actors and stuff in it, everybody's pulled together. The crew members, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be as far as we are now. Sure. Now, um, I guess either one of you could address this one. I know we talked a little bit about the casting. Um, roughly how many people, I'm going to ask this first to preface, how many people roughly are involved in the uh, in the production of this actor wise screen screen people how many screen people uh ben what would uh, i would say total uh was it that being counting crew i'd say we're around 30 or so members that's yeah. what been we're growing okay and yeah oh uh, yeah it keeps going actually we're we're, we're still casting you know yeah, yeah. And uh, every day, it's it's constantly, uh, the more that this gets out, the more times that we get, to, actually, it's kind of an ongoing joke between us, because Ben's constantly getting hit by messages every day, people wanting to be a part of the project, anything they can do to help. Yeah, that little ding on my phone is about, about wore out. <laughs> <laughs> um. We've got, we, and also, I, I think it's kind of impressive that um, the Midas Cove has already gotten um, there was a newsreel. I think I sent you the clip um, that they covered on the uh, the news the other night about this um, new film coming. Yeah, it, or, uh, it's funny, Patty. Event. You yeah. sent me the link to the clip, and I didn't go yeah. ahead and watch it. And then I actually pulled it up today just by googling, um, oh, search on okay. YouTube for minus color okay. to see what was out well, there. Well, I wondered if you, yeah, I wondered if you saw it because um, I was sending you a couple of things, and you had addre you had addressed. It. Just everything that I had sent, except for the clip. And I said, well, surely he saw the clip. I mean, you know, so I could have, I guess I could have punched oh, I, you a little bit. I guess hey. I could have showed it. But um, now the reason I asked about how many people were involved, um, I, I guess I'm going to follow that up now with how many of those people did you have to import in? Um, I guess Kentucky, okay, what she's talking about, everybody. Film, the film industry is becoming important to Kentucky. I.e., they they built a building in Lexington to be a, a movie studio. They or they remodeled. Um, but the, my my question is, okay, in gathering this cast together, I mean, 
I'm trying. I'm trying to run through my brain. I know that I'll put it this way. I was one of the most talented actors in the town that I grew up in, and I couldn't act my way out of a paper bag. That's right, get out in the world. So, uh, how? <laughs> what extreme? Did you have to go through extremes to get the 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 cast the talent that you needed, or were you able to locally source it like vegetables, or you know? How did they work out? To be, to be honest, I, uh, I think we was really blessed uh, with what people approached us. It just sort of went, uh, it come together a lot easier than what you would actually think. We was planning on it being real rough and going through, but everybody that we've had and the, the talent that we got was pretty much like the first people that approached uh, the post and, and the the ads that we put out there looking for cast members. Um so uh, really, it ain't, it ain't been as bad as you would think it would have been on that. It's in it, it's continually growing as it, we speak. Yeah, it's getting bigger every day. It really is. And how fast it's going. That's that's crazy, too. Well, if you come across a uh, where you need a second-rate podcaster, I'm usually... <laughs> Not as available well, as I am if you need a first-rate... <laughs> not, not nearly as much free time as I used to have, thanks to <laughs> Spearfish. But um yeah. okay, um let's see okay, we 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 talked about the cast now, okay. Um uh, uh Ben you 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 you, you snagged the medium uh, I believe the name was Jake. Is that Jake Carter. Okay, Jake Carter. Um who are some of the Tell us who, synopsis-wise, now what are the surrounding, we'll call it the core cast, in other words, the characters that kind of are in it from beginning to end, and if you can tell us who's playing those. In case it's me, yeah. Um, oh, well, uh, mine, of course, the Jack Carter, uh, Lisa Rodenauer, and uh, John Bishop, he plays uh, Hunter McDaniel. He's in it for the long haul. Uh, Eli Anchorman. He plays Kyle McDaniel. He's in it for the long haul. But, you know, there's, I mean, I'm, I'm going to lie to you. There's a, there's a lot of death oh. <laughs> in Midas Cove. And it's, oh, it, ain't, it ain't your easy, subtle death. It's brutal. <laughs> yeah, that's where the horror yeah. part comes in. As you can see. Way. Yeah, there you go. This is one of Jake. This is one of Jake's mini knives. <laughs> and one of our actors that we have is actually a Scareface uh, veteran. Is uh, Kayla Perkins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kayla Perkins. Yeah, she. Yeah, I, I'm so sorry. I forgot to mention her. Uh, well, I, yes, honestly, is, I would look at okay the name because yeah, now Kayla. We all remember Kayla. Um, in yeah. fact, she was in one of our our, our uh, big our our film our uh, film festival movies last year. Um, she was in the Lazarus game here recently filmed. If you ever heard of the Lazarus game, Kate Ward actually shot that. Okay. Um, but what I was asking, I'm more interested in, I want to hear more of the story without spoilers, other than waving the big knife on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess I want to know not who the actors are, I want to know who the characters are that we can look forward to seeing. Uh, in other words, here, here's how I'll put it. When you were yeah. casting this character, how did you describe it on the casting call? Okay, like when I was casting, uh, well, when I met Lisa Rodnow, I told her this woman is engaged to a narcissist and is mentally abusing her every single day. I mean, beating her down. And I, I asked her, I said, is that a role that you're okay with? And she said, I can, I can take it on, no problem. And when I test read, she blew me away because, I mean, she she nailed it first time around. And then Joshua Verrett, I tested him for her to down. I said, you have to be a prick, <laughs> a very mean one. I mean, and he goes, he said, well, this is more, this role is kind of a challenge to me because I've never really been that kind of a cruel guy. I said, well, you have to go past whatever you think's mean. You got to go past it. And. He stepped up to the challenge. I mean, he says some very god awful things <laughs> to this woman, and I mean, I felt bad for her. I really did. The way you know, you know, the script <laughs> when I was reading, you know, when I, when I write it, I'm like, oh god, I can't. 
what what's going on with my mind <laughs> saying stuff like this <laughs> i'm sure there's something and, uh, free in that thing. <laughs> <laughs> It's like and, you know the cast that I've you know the cast members uh, that I've test read for. I mean, I went through a bunch, but the ones that are in there and they I tell I describe this is what you got to be, this is what you got to do. The the core ones they nailed it first time around. I mean, I just I told it to them one time, and I didn't even have to tweak them in the test read. Jack and I, t- I test read Kayla Perkins, and she nailed it first time around. Over to you, Jack. Well, just kind of following up on that, uh, here in the age of COVID, how did you go about the actual casting and, and reading? Was that an electronic process, or did you fly on? I like what we're doing now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Through Zoom. Yeah. If we can get COVID too bad, I give up. Yeah. <laughs> I might get a computer virus. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I knew I knew we were in a new world when they started making horror films using Zoom. Oh my! So God. We 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 had moved on to a, a new world after that. Um, so you 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 said this is set up and you're you're putting this together as a series. Yes. What kind of goals do you have for the project? Do you what's what's your hopes or is there any plans right now on? Uh, on delivery methods? Is this something that you're shopping around still or? Uh, end goal would be more towards like Netflix, Amazon, your streaming services is what the end goal is for. Talking about the cameras? No, he's talking about. I know, but the, the quality of that. Oh, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, going into the cameras, like um, we're going to be incorporating, uh, well, we're shooting with a Sony FX6's uh, primary camera. Um, we're also going to be adding later on into the episodes uh, virtual production, uh, which I don't know how familiar you guys are with that, but that's using Unreal Engine. Uh, we're working on getting that set up uh, now, which that'll be a little bit later on to the seasons. Are you shooting this as one epi- an episode at a time or as uh, a season at a time? It, uh, right now, we'll probably be shooting it as a season at a time. So jumping around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, right now, how are you promoting it? What what kind of venues are you doing? Uh, I assume you're still in the money-raising phase, or, yes. or are you all set up? Uh, no, no we're, uh, we're still working on a lot of the logistics of it. Uh, but we've been promoting, of course, we're going to be at ScareFest, uh, but uh, we're also working on uh, different avenues of social media with, uh, of course, that's pretty much everything now with mm-hmm. any type of marketing. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, TikTok, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, any avenues that we can hit there. Are you getting close to the goals or you still got quite a way to go? Uh, we're, we've been proceeding, uh, actually, a lot quicker than what we originally anticipated. Uh, like I said, this project has been gaining uh, speed and gaining actually a lot faster than what we originally thought it was going to do. So uh, the goals are coming along nicely. How long have you been working on it? Uh, I would say, Ben, what would you say, close to uh, half, a, half a year, I'd say, when you started? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's when I first contacted you about <laughs> Um, I've been like every part of the project, I'm, I'm the kind that gets tunnel vision. So when they point me towards a direction that I'm working on, I, I kind of lose re, uh, touch with everything else that's going yeah, on. I have to reel back in. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it takes to get a project like this going. Yes, sir. Uh, it's been a challenge, but like I said, we've been really blessed, especially with the, the people that's come together and the talent. That's the biggest thing I... I know I keep reiterating that, but it's just really surprised me uh, okay. how quickly, easily that come together. And you wouldn't believe how professional this crew and cast is. Pure professionals. And okay. even in uh, even running into areas that we might be lacking or uh, we're trying to fill a spot, uh, th- we'll have multiple people in the crew or cast, either one to jump in and offer to help fill in until we get uh, things situated. So as the pr- you, you went over some of the filming locations. Is it primarily going to be 
filmed in in the Somerset area. I know you mentioned Floyd County and some other places. Yeah, uh, part uh, of Minus Cove is it's it's supposed to be around a lake, so we're actually using Cumberland Lake. Okay, uh, well, that's handy. Uh, yeah, yeah, that comes <laughs> that's helpful. <laughs> And that's kind of how the virtual production come uh, come around. Uh, some of the locations, we could get close to kind of what Ben was envisioning uh, for either, you know, building a house or, or whatever the situation would be, but it wouldn't quite right. So I started looking into ways because I wanted to really get as close as, to, as we can to what he's envisioning. So hence, that's where virtual production come in because with Unreal Engine, if you can imagine it, you can build it. Wow. Yeah. Unreal Engine uh, blew me away what, what all you can do on that. It's unbelievable what Brian can do. Well, if you're if you're a fan to give you the biggest production that I know of that's been using it very heavily with the L C D screens is a lot of people ain't aware of this, but if you're a fan of Mandalorian, the that entire uh series was filmed pretty much that way. Yeah. I I knew they were doing that sort of thing. So it's exciting to hear that that's coming to Kentucky, that we're gonna be seeing some of that locally. Yep. Oh yeah, it just it opens up so many paths because I, I would back guarantee if you talk to anybody that's ever done a movie that they uh they probably always got one section of it that they regret they couldn't get the look quite the way they envisioned it and they kind of had to sell, whether it be for location or where the case. But using that kind of technology and bringing it in, you can actually accomplish that. Wow. I can't wait to see that. Uh, we're right up against our half halfway point break. So I'm going to toss to that and we'll be back in just a moment. Spirit Mechanics is here to help. Their background includes many different specialties across the metaphysical spectrum, including alchemy, shamanism, Celtic witchcraft, angelic magic, astral travel, and more. With over 30 years combined experience in the group, you can be confident in their ability to help. If there is a question you have that you cannot answer, they will do their best to assist you. Metaphysics can be intimidating, confusing, and unfortunately, abused. Spirit Mechanics takes pride in being selfless in the pursuit of helping others, being humble and honest with their clients about their questions, and lastly maintaining a professional and personable atmosphere. They want you to feel as you are coming to a close friend and they will do everything in their power to make you comfortable and safe. And welcome back everybody to Scareface TV. Sorry, I cut you off there, Patty, but you gotta keep That's on okay. schedule here. That's um, okay. Okay, now, everybody, <laughs> I have a celebrity announcement. The problem is because the person doing the graphics, Brandon Griffin, uh, didn't listen to me <laughs> and do the names in such a way that you can copy and paste them because he wanted a certain glow effect. Gotta turn that shit out now. Anyway, we have a celebrity <laughs> announcement, and you'll just have to Google it, Google it and see pictures of it. But we are announcing tonight Aiden Fisher. Now, if you do not know who Aiden Fisher is, he's an actor and musician, originally from Omaha, Nebraska, currently living in Atlanta, Georgia. He's a guitarist for her. Okay, spoiler alert, that's your first hit. You remember the 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 scene in uh, Stranger Things two, um, uh, where the dude is on top of the truck, of the mobile home. It's mobile, home. and he's playing, um, uh, ripping his Master guitar. Yes, Master of Puppets. Mm -hmm. Now this was the 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 body double for the actor. Now the thing is, he actually does play guitar. He is a musician. Um. What was it? Uh, well, that, well, I know, but I don't trust Google anymore because I misspelled his name and also <laughs> found another guitarist. <laughs> but anyway, um, anyway, uh, uh, this whole Guns and Roses. Um, here we go. While Aiden has always had a love for music, Axel Rose would have would have to be credited for his high level of motivation to further learn and perform. 
This celebration turns in Aiden attending a Guns N' Roses concert with his father in 2013. Aiden was randomly invited by Axel to join the band on stage at the end of the show. Wow. Aiden stood with the band throughout to the crowd. And he got a little paid for what a rock star feels like for the crowd. Upon returning to Omaha, he picked up his guitar and did not put it down the rest of the summer. So basically, um, he's, uh, he's coming in now. Okay. And he's actually going to come to Scarefest. And yes, he's going to play that song. Oh, good. And oh, my God. That I don't, they've been bragging. Awesome. So, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So, anyway, that's our that's celebrity announcement tonight. That's that a was neat, one that, neat that, addition. That yeah. uh, we've been working on. And um, I think they actually had the contract like two weeks ago. And didn't do it. But anyway, so um, <laughs> Layton Fisher is coming to Scarefest 2022. Um, put somebody in the chat room if they need to tell you about the tickets. Okay. So I have a question. Okay. How, how many more uh, do you think you'll be announcing? I, have I mean, are no you, uh, god dang idea. And the reason I don't okay. know that, Patty, <laughs> All right. is, okay. is every time. <laughs> Okay, we're done booking as far as booking. Yeah. Okay. But branding, apparently we we didn't keep a really good track of the people we've touched base with and sent contracts out to. Now those contracts are coming in, so we have to kind of honor them. Um, um, and and tell okay. you, now we're in another really unique position this year. We've actually, okay. we have celebrities calling us and going, please. I'll fly myself in, you know. Um, oh my god! I'll find a, I'll find a place to stay. That is oh that god. is um, how much we've grown. So we, in yeah. order, we've slid a couple awesome. in like that. But mostly, it's That's just awesome. these are people we touch the base with before we cut oh. it off. And now we got to figure out how to buy a plane ticket. So um, right. the, the, the old master cards are getting warmed up right now. Okay, Bandit three <laughs> D printing. Everybody, one of the uh, scare fest. Uh, sponsoring them is Brand Bandit 3D Printing. Go to their website, look them up on Etsy. They go to the Scarefest weekend. Uh, uh, they've got a link on the featured vendor page. I want you to get a new click. It will take you right there. But if you're just on Etsy, it's uh, Bandit 3D Printing. They 3D print stuff and they've got some really neat stuff on there, including a few Jason X Uber masks. Um, you can find those if you don't really get that. A lot of ray guns and that. And if I'd have known they existed, I could have found my uh, supernatural angel sword much faster. And they probably could have done a better job than they got done. Although it's, it's okay, just I gotta glue it back together because, you know. Um, because they've got a dagger on it. The Friday the 13th goes to Hell Dagger. That looks pretty impressive. So, anyway, so look them up on Etsy, everybody. Uh, 3, but Bandit 3D Printing. There you will find all of your 3D printed items from movies, video games, TV shows, car accessories, RC diecast parts, finished products, and more. And they offer a custom option for you. So look them up. Now, Edge Witch Hall. Edge Witch Hall. Um, um, um. Look here. He and Gifts. Okay. The Gift of Crap. Um, they, uh, Hedge Witch Hall. Head Witch Dash Hall. Dot square dot site. Once again, just go to these, uh, go to Scarefest Weekend, pull up the featured vendor page, and you'll find them towards the top because you're a sponsoring vendor. But, um, just, uh, they've got tea blends, um, that's their, and then like, go to the website. Um, but pumpkin spice. Oh my god, it is pumpkin spice time yet again. So, uh, look them up, but if, uh, their return vendor, Hedgewitch Hall. And, uh, now, this little puppy here. See if I get what I did with the actual information. Oh, I know where it is. Yes, you're right. It's on this screen. Ta-da! Hey, everybody. This exclusive Friday the 13th mask from 13X Studios. Each mask is custom made by Rick. And I'm not even trying to last name. <laughs> Sorry, Rick, if you're out there. Stazinski. Um... The selfie guy from Terrifier 2 and features two iconic horror legends, Kane Hopper and CJ Brown. Uh, part 6 and 8 mashup, part 8 color and weathering, part 6 chevrons, all that technical stuff that you, you horror fans look for. This is, an only, this is the only run of the mask that he's going to make. They're numbered, they're collectible, 
and be able to get them autographed and see them get them. Uh, you can order them now um, as an add-on. Uh, go to your ticket page, look for the add-on, you can go ahead. But they will sell out because we're only making so many of them. So I just wanted to show, to share that. If you're not on the Scarefest group, which I bet everybody is, look at that. Um, we're going to have those for sale. Now, here's another thing. This is a Facebook page. It's a little circle that you put around your profile picture. And Facebook used to do that for you. But guess what? They don't do it no more because, and this is my, okay, this is my one first political statement I've made forever. All you anti-boxers screwed it up for everybody because you made all the smart-ass little phrase. <laughs> they won't do it for anybody. But <laughs> there is a workaround. We posted it on the Scarefest fan group. So if you're not a member of the fan group, join it. Scroll down. And despite what some people say, it does work. You know how I know? Because I did two within 60 seconds tonight on my Android phone. Now, if you're on an iPhone, it might not work because iPhones suck. But other than that, um, <laughs> do it on your desktop. I've done it on desktop via Chrome. And, uh, matter of fact, I think I did one on Edge. And, uh, is that what the new browser is called? Microsoft Edge. Yeah. No, it yet. came on the computer. Anyway, so you can do that. Uh, the link's on there. And you, you can proudly proclaim that uh, the part coming to the scare Um, well, I'm going to go back to what uh, you mentioned in the last segment. Last year during Film Fest, because everybody had been doing Zoom, we had a bunch of Zoom horror movies submitted, and it was entertaining for like the first one or two. And then it, like, it started reminding me. About every, about Armageddon, and so uh, they they kind of scoring went down on. Um, some people just thought they could just throw together a Zoom meeting, call it a horror movie, and call it a day. But some of them were actually actually pretty good. <laughs> um, I know I've seen a couple that uh that entertained me, but yeah, it's 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 a a niche that can't be overdone. <laughs> the, I'm still <laughs> amazed, you gentlemen. I'm still amazed. Um, Doing this show, probably in a year's time, I'll probably do 45 weeks. I'll probably skip five weekends because I'm traveling. There are still people out there that have not used Zoom. Can you believe that? There are still people out there in the, through 20, made it through 2020 without doing Zoom. Um, hmm. Wow. So, um, I mean, I'm going through it. Chad asked all the really good questions that I had. Um, I wanted to hear more about the, the, the locations, but he covered that really, really good. Now, what are, um, okay, as far, I know you said you're getting ready to film some stuff in Lexington. Is that because you needed a more, you wanted somebody to get shot for real? No, I'm kidding. Um, is that because you Well, I mean, it, hey, if it, if it makes money. <laughs> no, it really is. My kind of guy, my yeah. kind of guy. And you save all the corn syrup and all Um. Yeah, really. If that's the case. I'm signing Wes up to uh, to be the victim. Um, <laughs> actually, no. The actual oh question my. was: Are you cut? Do you actually um, to use the term loosely? Do you actually need a big city for one of the locations, or is there just some landmark that you felt that you needed? What what making the transition from where you're at coming to Lexington? What what was the the impetus behind? It? Actually, I just wanted to show Lexington off. I mean, they got some beautiful places out there. There's actually a, a certain scene. I, I don't want to give up any details, but there's a certain place down there that involves Jake Carter that we want to film, and it's a very beautiful setting down there. Kate Ward actually told me about it. And like I said, I, I don't want to give any spoilers, but it's, like a, it's, a real, it's a really sad scene. That's all I can say about it <laughs> for right now. <laughs> hey, uh, Wes, if, if I can real sure. quick, uh, just going back on what you're doing with the 3D printing, that's actually something that we're also doing as well. Uh, we're actually having replicas made of Jake Carter's knife. Brian, can you show him the the, the real knife for you? I mean, one of the, the main knives that Jake is using? I showed him, I showed him this one. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the other one. Give me one second. Yeah. So this knife that we uh, 
This one right here was one of the first knives, but you know, Jake's gonna have multiple knives. But his main one, it's very vicious looking. Oh, because so that one looks exactly. so warm and fucking cuddly. Right. I got you. Yeah. Well, it does. I mean, this is like the the the, the G rated version. You know? yeah. There's the next one. <laughs> There's the one. Oh no, that's yeah. to me. No, that's a real knot. That that's to me. That's that's, <laughs> that's a knot. Yeah, that's my kind of <laughs> crocodile Dundee quality. I, so that's kind of. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of where the horror part comes in, the blood and guts and the cutting and screaming and, yeah. Well, yeah. The Dan's holding in is actually the original knife we was going to use, but the problem was we couldn't find uh, more of it that exactly matched. So I had to have a, a knife that I could get multiple copies, uh, depending on what kind of uh, shots we was doing and what kind of effects we was going to add. So if somebody's been in Gatlinburg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, this was a uh, Amazon special. Okay. Oh. Actually, I found that knife online. <laughs> well, actually, Brian found a better deal than what I found. So. I, I went through my knife phase um, in, in, in Gatlinburg. Of course, at, at Gatlinburg, everybody, for wondering, has about it. I don't know, the cycle's about every five years, about every five years, every shop in town starts selling the exact same day in town. And for about five years, it was, everybody opened a knife shop. And they had hunting knives and, <laughs> and butterfly knives. And, and yes, I did buy a butterfly knife. And I'm afraid to do the little flippy thing because I said, there goes my phone. And, I, I have the same way. <laughs> scared to yeah. get my hand off. <laughs> Um, so basically, it's a really slow switchblade when I have it. Anyway, um, we're at the, the uh, third commercial break. We want to make sure we get Bonehead Weekly's movie review in. Everybody will be right back after this message and Bonehead Weekly. Horror. Movie. Fan. Four. Life. On Facebook. Find us. Four watch parties. Four news. Four memes. Four friends. Four life. Horror movie fans for life. Join us. Hey, Scarefest fans, this is Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly here with another review. This week's is a Netflix exclusive. That's right, we're talking about Jamie Foxx in Day Shift. Did you want to watch Jamie Foxx and Snoop Dogg hunt vampires? And Jamie Foxx pretends to be a pool boy, doesn't tell his wife, who's estranged, is taking the house, and he's having to live in an apartment. His daughter doesn't know. In the day, he hunts vampires for money, and he got thrown out of the union. There's a vampire hunter union, and he's trying to get back in, and Snoop Dogg's trying to help him get back in, because if he doesn't raise like $50,000, and by the end of the week, his wife's selling the house and moving to Florida to be with her mom and taking his daughter, and he doesn't want to lose his daughter. So he has to get back into the vampire killing union to raise enough money so he can keep his daughter. And then there's another vampire. She's a woman, and she's trying to take over all the different vampire cliques in the valley in California and L.A., so that she can be uh, basically their warlord or whatever. And they uh, he accidentally uh, kills her daughter, but her daughter is old. And she comes looking for him. And uh, if you're thinking this is getting confusing, Joe Lewis, stop telling us the plot. You now know how I feel. Is it terrible, Day Shift? No, it's not terrible. It's just so stupid. It's written by J Shay Hatton uh, and directed by J.J. Perry. Jay Hatton wrote another movie I can't stand called Army of the Dead, but this one's slightly better than Army of the Dead, but it still doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense. He also wrote John Wick 3, but you don't show up for the John Wick films for the plot. 
J.J. Perry, the director, this is his first time being a sub. First and foremost, he is a second unit director and a famous stuntman. He's worked on almost all the Fast and Furious's, Furious films and directed second unit and all, all of them. He has an impressive career. However, this particular picture starring Jamie Foxx and Snoop Dogg, probably not the best calling card. The thing is, though, it's also got Dave Franco, is it's not awful. This movie's not awful. If it sounds like I'm crapping on it, it's just because it's incredibly poorly written. Plotted out, there are scenes that just jump. Like, why is this one lady that lives next to Jamie Foxx who he meets only once before we find out this plot twist with her beforehand and how she wishes she'd never done it to him? What does is, is it even mean? It, they don't even explain it. it it's just poorly written. <laughs> However, it's not terrible. It's 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 watchable. It's just don't think about it. In fact, the opening scene with the vampire that he kills at the first of it is pretty cool. How they hire a lot of contortionists, and I was watching this with someone, and she was like, yeah, 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 yeah that's the fourth time I've seen the same contortionist. It's it's fun, but don't, don't, don't think about it at all. So can I recommend it? If you have Netflix and you want to watch a stupid action vampire film, then yes, by all means. It's slightly better than Army of the Dead or whatever it was called, that Vegas one. That was awful. Can I recommend it? I like J.D. Fox a lot. I like Snoop Dogg a lot. Dave Franco's fine. Dave Franco has some funny lines in it. There's a couple of funny scenes in it. But can I recommend it? Only if you have Netflix and only if you're looking for something at, at the middle of the night and you're like, ah, oh, man. It does have the great uh, character actor St Peter Stormare in it, which I appreciate. But he's only in it two or three scenes. Snoop Dogg actually isn't in a ton. There's a couple of riffs on other more famous vampire films the the his boss is slightly funny it, it's just all slightly it just it's not so bad it's fun to watch it's in that it's not good but it's tolerable and if you got an hour and 50 minutes to kill go ahead and check it out so this has been my review of day shift i can't recommend it but i can't tell you it's awful so, it's, once again some of the vampire scenes are cool some of the fights are cool check it out for that this has been joe lewis bonehead weekly And welcome back, everybody, to the last few moments of Scarefest TV. We've been talking about uh, the Midas Cove series being filmed in Kentucky. Um, I'm not sure either one of you can answer this. I do want to know, since you started getting all this put together, and, and um, what's been the biggest challenge? Has there been a challenge that you've not been prepared for? What's been your biggest challenge? Oh, let me count the wax. <laughs> <laughs> right, Brian? <laughs> uh, yeah, that lens can get a little bit lengthy. Uh, you don't have enough time in the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say the one of my, well, at least on my part, like, uh, especially it was just locations at first. Uh, that uh, at first it started really easy, and then quite on some of the locations we was looking for kind of turned into a nightmare. Yeah. Um, and that's the same thing because uh, Ben was constantly getting a hold of me. He said, do you find a location for this scene? Do you find a location? I'm like, oh, ben. I said, I'm trying, but I, I haven't got one. So, but that's, I would say one of the biggest challenges, at least on my side. What about you, Ben? Realistically, the casting, you know, scheduling, because, you know, you got, you get all these actors and you, you throw out a date and they go, well, I got this, 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 and this on this date, date, and then you got to reschedule. It's uh, then you finally get everybody there, and there's one person, and that's the main person you need for the shot. They can't make it, so you got to do it all over again. <laughs> but I have to say, the cast has really stepped up and made sacrifices, and you know they're willing to when we when we start shooting, they're going to be there. Now, okay, now this is just me being my jerk ass self. Now, one Kentucky actress that I did that you have not mentioned, um, I don't know if she just didn't show for casting or didn't make it, but anyway, um, and I want to—I like throwing out little uh, uh, Cassidy Ray Owens, and the reason I, I like to point that out—I've known her since Patty. You probably remember her. Uh, she, uh, but she—I've um, known her since she was like twelve years old, and then last year in the film festival, she had a nude scene, and I'm like, God. I felt so bad. 
<laughs> it's okay, Wes. Yeah. It's okay. You feel so bad. Well, I did. I felt, I felt like I needed a shower. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway. Uh, oh, God. Okay, now, real, real question here. Let's go back. How does one do location scouting? That's one thing I've never really... I mean, how did you do it? Did you just, like, put it up on Facebook and say, hey... I need somebody junky car, and then you just go around and look at what everybody posted. How did you? How do you do location scouting for something? Uh, well, honestly, uh, at one point, I was doing it in Floyd County. <laughs> started off to start off at the gym where I'm at, Pro Fitness. Uh, then we were like, no, that ain't gonna work. And then I just drive around to the lake, looking at lakes, looking at places, talking to people about can we use their location. Brian did the same thing, and then. Finally, I went down to Somerset, me and uh, Brian just started driving around, and he said, hey, I know. Let's uh, let's stop here. Like, you know, Pete, he knows, like, more people than I do, and, you know, they, we, we talk to him, and uh, it's just slowly come together, you know. It just really did. It just, we, way, uh, it's about, it's about I... meeting and talking with people constantly, getting to know them and tell them more what, what we're doing, getting to agree to it. <laughs> Uh, the way I went about it is, uh, um, what m me personally is just my memory. Like when uh, I would sit down with Ben, and we'd be discussing a certain scene, but going past uh, what he actually had in the script, and just trying to really pick at uh, his mind and get a, a visual in my head of what he was kind of seeing. And then uh, he, as we would get in the conversation, I'd be like, "Man, I know a spot that we would look would fit that." And then we would go and check it out, and then uh, it would. Uh, end up working really good but like i said we've had some trouble finding uh spots for some of the locations okay. that we want to use um uh, so we've been working on that but uh i don't know it's, I, it's an interesting process actually the the scout location it just keeps evolving because when you re rewrite scenes change scenes you add stuff more locations has got it's got to be found and that's where unreal engine is going to come in and help big time it's going to eliminate oh my god how much would it eliminate Brian? i mean it, it, you know it'll what? help a lot uh still I, I mean we'll still be using some uh phys even when it's fully implemented we'll be using some physical locations uh just because of uh to keep the realism but like uh one thing that uh like one of my favorite locations that we're going to be using is uh of course it's on the lake uh, I we actually got access to uh, if you guys are familiar with boats, the center console, uh, Midnight Express, um, and if you th those boats are just absolutely beautiful. Uh, I can't really put it in words. And actually, if I thought about it, I'd brought the pictures to show you guys. But uh, it's just something. If you get a chance to look one up, you you'll understand what I'm saying. Oh yeah. Well, we're Amazing. we're at the end of the show, so I'm just gonna put it out there and leave. It's kind of an open ended question now. What is the most important thing you two gentlemen want to tell the Scarefest family about the Midas Cup? You're going to love it. And understand, whoever you think's going to be safe won't be. <laughs> I'll assure you that. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, this has been Scarefest TV. Next week, I have everything going to be playing. We have Dave Schrader coming on the air. Uh, we've moved our council meeting back a week. I think I really need to tell Adrian to bring him back. They, they don't show up. Um, but anyway, so yeah, Dave Schrader will be our guest next week. So I'll see you then, everybody. This has been Scarefest TV. Good night.